This tutorial discusses the history of social democracy, specifically the debates of the early era, era to um, give a sense of context to what happens to the social uh, democratic movement in more contemporary days. So I'll start with the 1850s and just laying out the, the foundational key values and so on as, as done by Marx. And then I'll go on to the debates of the late, late 1800s and how that informed what would become the split uh, in 1917 to 1920 and how the socialist movement um, divided into two branches really. One of which was uh, uh, social democracy, what we call today social democracy. So, um, just a really quick uh, overview over the key values of socialism, community, cooperation, equality, needs, common ownership. Uh, of course, heavily informed by Karl Marx, uh, so his view about the class struggle in society, the class divisions that, uh, in his view, plague society, the bourgeois class being the property-owning class, exploiting the worker class, the, the proletariat. Uh, this, this collectivist focus on class belonging uh, and the strong emphasis on economic conditions and dialectics, the contradictory forces that, that drive history, the contradictory forces inherent to the capitalist economy uh, specifically uh, that, that causes problems in society. So this is uh, these key notions that were uh, really informing socialism um, and, and still does um, to a large extent, but we need to keep those in mind uh, when we go on to the great debates. And now I'm talking about the great debates in the late 1800s and specifically what was to be called socialist reformism. So this was really a central cleavage in social, socialist discussions during, uh, during those days. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the central ideas here was that social reform on behalf of the working class uh, meant to gain advantages for the working class. And uh, in British socialism, we saw that uh, the movement actually gained successes in that sense. Um, and why it's called reformist is because uh, this movement didn't want to wait for a revolution. Uh, instead, it was uh, building a new society by degrees and by day-to-day -day successes in day-to-day -day political struggles. But the controversy with this was that it contradicted the orthodoxy that all reforms within capitalism uh, are superficial and impermanent. And this was an orthodoxy that was uh, uh, strong and, and commonsensical to socialism in the 1800s. And, and it's also a, a point of view and a perspective that, that recurs in the modern day. Um, so uh, what these reformists were doing then contradicted that orthodoxy and that was controversial and, and spawned this, this uh, great uh, cleavage, this great debate in socialist discussion during uh, those days. And this controversy, it questioned a series of principles led out by Marx. Uh, first of all, the, the uh, predicted development of capitalism. Um, and uh, the inevitability of the socialist revolution. Uh, it also, to some extent, Mar questioned Marx's faithfulness to Hegel's dialectics. Uh, and, and it did so in the sense that um, the re these reforms didn't really uh, increase in class polarization. As a result, instead, um, social stratification became more complex and not less complex as had been predicted. Uh, so uh, they also showed that worker conditions under capitalism was not necessarily hopeless or without substantial improvements. It might not, these reforms might not have displaced capitalism, they might not have eliminated capitalism, they might not have revolutionized the economic, economic system, but they had real effects for the people living in the system. And all of this uh, was seen as, as quite controversial. Uh, one very significant person uh, in this debate was Edward Bernstein, really the most uh, prominent advocate of, of revisionist and 
a reformist socialism and in many ways a founding father of modern, modern social democracy. And he broke with the revolutionary socialists after the Russian Revolution, particularly. Um, and uh, when, he, when I, the, the term reformist here uh, means exactly, taps into exactly these principles as led out by uh, uh, reformists working within the existing system for social and economic justice. His arguments uh, can be summarized like thus. Uh, these points, these five points. Uh, first of all, he critiqued the idea of uh, class conflict as irreconcilable. In other words, he was saying that the, the working class and the bourgeoisie class actually can negotiate and get along in some sense. Not necessarily always um, agree on everything and certainly it didn't transform the inherent nature of their positions within the capitalist system. In other words, one being the owner of the means of production and the others being the laborers. Uh, but there was this sense, the sense that uh, let's meet at the negotiation table and work something out, uh, which uh, is, is strongly controversial for those who believe that classes uh, can never get along and that the class conflict is irreconcilable. Uh, for Bernstein also, democracy was not just a weapon, but an end in itself, the form which socialism sh itself, itself could take to become a reality. Uh, so uh, for him, the dictatorship of the proletariat was meaningless. And this is also strongly uh, controversial in the debates of the late 1800s and early 1900s. So uh, he also goes on to say that the conquest of power and socialization of property are means for him, but not ends. Again, it taps back into democracy, it taps back into what are the outcomes we're trying, trying to achieve. So socialization of property then is not the end itself, uh, but just a tool to achieve the end of the classless society. And he says, what is generally called the ultimate goal of socialism is nothing to me. The movement is everything, which was a highly controversial statement and quite stirred up quite a bit of a critique, which we will see in a moment. He also felt that sticking to utopias, in other words, this uh, vision of the classless society in, in, in the future, that, that sticking to this unconditionally or, or sticking to this uh, without relating to the here and now and what could be done in the here and now was damaging to pro social progress because it specifically distracted uh, those working politically from the reforms that they could immediately achieve. And all of this, all of these uh, ideas were, were quite uh, controversial indeed. So uh, let me then uh, present the critiques to these arguments. Uh, and these are all critiques from the revolutionary left. And I'll get to Luxembourg at the bottom of the screen in a moment. Here are uh, three voices. Uh, Plikhanov uh, arguing that, that Bernstein is turning socialism from a revolutionary doctrine to a program for legislative reform. Uh, and of course, uh, the part of the revolutionary doctrine at this stage uh, was uh, count against the political system as well. Uh, Kautsky, going on, uh, argued that without revolution, socialism had no reason for existing uh, at all, uh, which effectively says that what Bernstein is saying is not really socialism, it's something else. It's some, maybe some kind of, of social liberalism or something. Labriola, the Italian, said that uh, Bernstein had joined the liberal uh, bourgeoisie, which uh, is another way of saying that he is a sellout, effectively. Now I'm going to get to the the most the, the longest uh, uh, row of critique here from from Rosa Luxemburg, the the um, uh, revolutionary and, and socialist in in Germany. And she had these uh, uh, two main points and, and two sub points to to add to that. So first of all, uh, if capitalism can adapt to uh, avoid crisis of overproduction, then then socialism is unnecessary. So this idea that um, conditions for workers could actually uh, be improved uh, by reform, 
within the capitalist system uh, would mean that socialism is unnecessary. And by socialism here, Luxembourg is referring to revolutionary socialism. Like the other uh, critics, uh, she would probably argue that Bernstein wasn't a real socialist. At least that's my take on what she's saying here. Another point here is that there's no point in working for a revolution if capitalism can be reformed by improving the worker standards of life, which is exactly what I just mentioned. Because uh, first of all, such reform is impossible due to the inherent anarchy and crisis of capitalism, and B, uh, the worker is a priori exploited by virtue of selling labor power, and only a revolution can change this. So the, 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 what she is actually saying is, uh, it, these reforms won't have an actual and, and real effect, uh, which of course Bernstein and his followers uh, contested quite, quite intensely. Then came uh, the years 1917 and 1920. 1920, and that's the, the time of the rift where the socialist movement splits up. Uh, and it goes to in two different directions and the reformists be, uh, form the social democratic parties and the revolutionaries uh, socialists tend to gather around the communist parties now it's not quite that simple because uh, Kautsky that was so critical uh, of, of Bernstein and the reformists uh, also criticized the Bolsheviks intensely uh, so there is actually more uh, going on here uh, and, and more factionalism and more dynamics between different uh, scholars and, and thinkers in, in those days uh, than, than this simple division uh, make it seem. Uh, but if the point here is to show that there is a difference between the revolutionary socialists and the social democratic uh, movement that uh, would uh, form that would form the basis of, of what we today see as social democratic parties. So before this rift, uh, the socialist parties uh, in the, the what would become the democratic world uh, really embraced all of these different viewpoints, both the revolutionaries and the reformists. And there was a, this was really a debate within the socialist parties. But after this rift, we can see a clear distinction between people who are reformists and who talk about achieving immediate uh, reforms, immediate improvements for uh, the working class within the capitalist system, reforming the capitalist system from within, and on the other hand, the revolutionaries that went off and, and uh, very often built uh, communist parties uh, aiming to uh, use the armed revolution to um, change the capitalist system in its core. And of course, uh, when it comes to the social democratic parties, uh, which is our concern here, we can see that they had significant electoral success in the early 1900s and uh, through the mid 1900s as well. And so many different parties in uh, European nations and uh, outside Europe uh, have been built on this reformist uh, ID and this reformist perspective on society and capitalism. You have the New Democratic Party in Canada, uh, social democratic parties in, in just about any given European nation, the labor in the United Kingdom. And I'll leave here with a note from Prevorsky, who said that um, these parties had no real plan for how to use reform to achieve the ultimate objective of socialism. In other words, how to get from capitalism to a classless society. There was no real plan for this at that stage. And that becomes important in the next tutorial. Uh, but for now, uh, this, is, uh, this has been a presentation of the main debates within socialism during the early era.